In this project I'm going to be constructing the automation board that I'm going to be using with my automated RV sign. And this board can be made one of two ways. Option one is a monochrome only board and option two is an RGB board. So I can use either a single color or multiple color LEDs. And with a lot of my projects and especially this one I encourage you to go to my website because you're going to want to download a bill of materials and much more detail than what I can provide here in this video. So this video basically is just an overview and all the details are going to be on a web page. If you get the circuit board from OSH Park, it'll have usually little tabs on the end here that you can cut yourself with. So just take a little pair of pliers and just trim those off. So the first step is going to be to populate this board with all the resistors. Now I'm using metal film 1% resistors simply because they don't really cost that much more than the carbon resistors and they're actually better. The only issue though is the color code is a little harder to decipher. It might be better just to leave them in the little packets that they come in until you're ready to use them. So we have all of our parts here. First thing is the AT Tiny 85. We're actually going to put this aside for a while. And let me remove all these parts so that I can show you one by one basically how they go together. So we're going to start out with the resistors first. The first ones we're going to put in are the 10K ohm resistors. Now I'm actually going to show you how to do option one and two, but just remember you're going to use option one or two, but not both. A 10K ohm resistor is brown, black, black, and red. And we do that for four spots. We do R1 here and R6 here and if we're doing option 1 we would have put R9 and R10 in but we're showing option 2 which is R2 and R3. Either these two resistors are going to be in here or those two resistors but not both. Next comes the 1K resistor which is brown black black brown and that goes in R7. Next, we put in R5, which is orange, orange, black, red. That's 33K. And then finally, R4, a 22K resistor, red, red, black, red. And in step two, we're going to install the transistors as well as the integrated circuit for the voltage regulator. Now, when I lay them out, they all look identical. That's the voltage regulator. These are the three transistors. And in this case, I can tell the transistors apart because the leads look a little different. The only way you can honestly tell the difference is you have to read the part number that's on here. What I recommend doing is leaving them in the little baggies that they come in until you're ready so you don't mix them up. Because, of course, if you mix them up, they won't work. Now. With these transistors, the leads are a little bit goofy, and it just depends on where the supplier is. Sometimes they come like this, sometimes they come like this, and these are polarity sensitive. If you notice, there's a flat spot there. That corresponds to the flat spot here. So what we want to do we want to put that in so that the flat spots are equal or on the same side. And then we simply do that in the other positions. Now again, if we were building option one, we would only have a transistor here. With this transistor and this transistor would not be on the board, but for option two, we want all three. And then in a similar fashion, we want to do the integrated circuit. This is a 3.3 volt voltage regulator, like that. And in this step, we want to install the two electrolytic capacitors. And these are polarity sensitive, and you'll notice a short lead. And you'll also notice a stripe with a minus sign on it. That's negative. On the board, there's a plus and minus on the board as well. 
So of course we want to make plus to plus and minus to minus. Now the second one, it can interfere just a little bit here with this terminal. So what I suggest is locate the terminal so that the inserts for the wires are to the outside and just set that on there temporarily. When you put the capacitor in, the capacitor may not quite fit straight and that's fine. We just want to have this so that it's seated. And then the last capacitor, and this one is not polarity sensitive, and you can solder this now if you want, that's fine. Now if you're building the option two, we want to use two of these smaller ones. If you're building option one, we only want to use one. Now the difference between the two is you'll see their different widths, the pins. What you will have to do with these if you're using two of them is you can't put them in side by side and they won't fit. There is a little slot on the end of each one. They actually slide together like that. And if you're building option one, you'd only have connector here and you would not have the second connector. And while the socket itself is not polarity sensitive, it does have a polarity mark on it because that helps you in installing the microcontroller with the correct polarity. And you'll see that there's a half moon notch in here. And that corresponds to this top surface where this dot is. And when we install the microcontroller later, the microcontroller has a similar notch and we just line those up. And here's the 100K potentiometer. And this is a four position switch that you would use with option one. And these switches are not polarity dependent. You can actually install them either way. And if you're building option two, you would only use two switches. And you can see where the other two switches will not be used. And for the photocell, it comes with fairly long leads and we don't want to cut those leads. What we want to do is get a couple pieces of heat shrink and put the heat shrink over the leads like that. And then we want to install it on the board. Because what we need is we need that extra length because we're going to run this over to the side of the case and poke it through a hole that we're going to drill on the case side. So we want the extra lengths here. And when we're done, it looks like this. Now this is the option two, the RGB version. I have missing these two resistors here at the bottom. And also missing is two positions of the switch on the bottom side. Also flat spots go towards the top on the three transistors. The flat spot goes actually to the bottom on this voltage regulator. Both of the negative stripes for these capacitors are on this side. Of course we have the photo cell here and our switch here, our sensitive adjustment here and then our AT Tiny 85 here. And that completes construction of the automation board. The next step is going to be programming the AT Tiny 85 and I've made a video just for that because it kind of goes in depth as well. So click on the other video to see the details on how to program this board.